Now, obviously, there are quite a few workbook event triggers, and we're not wanting to spend hours and hours exploring every single one, but I am going to have a look at a, a couple of others that can be quite useful. So we've seen the open in quite a lot of detail. We've seen the close and the save in quite a lot of detail. Now we're going to look at a number of others, the first of which is the sheet activation. So you can actually capture when an individual sheet is activated and actually deactivated. So if we go into the Visual Basic, we're actually using the workbook events file, which is pretty much a blank file, but with some named sheets. We're still triggering workbook events. So we go to the This Workbook code sheet, and we can run a workbook trigger, which is Sheet Activate. So we don't need the open one. Now what you'll find is the workbook underscore sheet activate is the sheet activate trigger for the workbook. And it passes in the name of the sheet that is currently activated as a variable called sh. So I can make use of that sh in something as simple as a message box that tells us the sh name. So let's go back to Excel. Every time we activate a new sheet, we are given the name of that sheet in a message box. Obviously, that's not particularly exciting. You can see potential. Now, deactivating the sheet is pretty much a similar trigger. So it's the workbook and it's sheet deactivate. And you can see pretty much matches the activate one is it passes the name of the sheet that you've deactivated. So if we create a little variable higher than these two sub procedures, so let's dim the last sheet as an object. What we can then do is when you leave a sheet, we could set the last sheet variable to be equal to effectively the sheet you've just left, so sh. Then when you activate a sheet, we could actually say, you've just left x and you're now in Y. So let's declare a little message string here. And we'll build that as MSG equals you have just left last sheet. And are now in sh dot name. How does that look? In one way to find out. So when they deactivate a sheet, the name of that sheet gets placed into the last sheet variable. Now logically that seems to have encompassed everything. However, a couple of minor changes are required. Firstly, we need to tell the message box to use our clever little MSG instead of just the name of the sheet. We also need to come down to here where it says last sheet equals sh and add a set keyword because the last sheet is actually an object we define that here it's not to all intents and purposes a text variable or a numeric variable so we have to use the set keyword so we set last sheet to be equal to sh which is also an object where we're then using last sheet because it's not a variable it's an object we have to tell it which part of that object we're interested in and it's its name, so it becomes dot name here, as well as sh dot name there. So the object is the whole sheet. We're only interested in dealing with, in this case, the name of that sheet. So we need to pull out that as a property of this object. Let's now see if that works. So we're in guy sample sheet. We leave that to go to Sally interesting info, and we're told that you've just left guy sample sheet and are now in Sally's interesting info. Likewise, jumping to Susan's sales, we've left Sally and are now in Susan's sales. And one last final example, we left Susan's sales and are now in Mike data. So that's using both the sheet activate and the sheet deactivate triggers for the workbook by using the sh, which is your sheet. We're placing that here into a last sheet object and we're making use of that when we activate the next sheet by using the name of the last sheet objects, the last sheet we left, and the name of the sheet we're currently in. So it's quite a clever little use 
and I'm sure that your minds will be ticking over as to other clever uses that you can make of the workbook trigger that we're using here of sheet activate and sheet deactivate.